Joining me now is Senator Gary Peters of Michigan. He is the chair of the Democratic Senatorial Campaign Committee and a member of the Senate Armed Services Committee and chair of the Homeland Security Committee. Chairman Peters, thank you very much for coming back to the Sunday show. So, you know, the New York Times uh, today uh, story says Democrats maintain narrow path for keeping control of the Senate, and it says... Um, uh, Democratic Senate candidates in the upper Midwest states of Michigan, Ohio, and Wisconsin hold leads over their Republican competitors. I've heard you say before that you are confident that Democrats will hold on to the 50 seats that they currently have. Why are you so confident? Well, I, I'm confident uh, for a couple of reasons. Uh, one is candidate quality, which is uh, absolutely essential to have on your side, and we do. We have incredibly strong incumbents uh, and challengers uh, who have uh, consistently been able to run against uh, the, above the margins uh, against their Republican opponents. And the Republican candidates, uh, as I've been saying, and if you look at the, their records and what they've been doing on the campaign trail, I say you can probably put them on a continuum from flawed to seriously flawed flawed, and most of them are pushing the envelope on the seriously flawed can uh, uh, part of that spectrum. And so we can paint that contrast. But uh, of course, just having the best candidate doesn't mean you win. You also have to run a really great campaign. That's what they're doing at the DSCC, uh, just like we did last cycle. We're working very closely with these incumbents to make sure we have a strong ground game, because ultimately mm -hmm. in these very close races, it's about turning out your voters and doing that on the ground, which we're going to do again. Okay, so that's the 50 state strategy. Now let's talk about Texas and Florida, because I think a lot of people were surprised by the move that you are making to push it, put in resources in those two states. What are you seeing on the ground in Texas and Florida that precipitated this move? Well, we're seeing a uh, momentum. Uh, clearly, we're focused to make sure we hold our 50, and we're going to continue to raise uh, resources to do that. We need help. But we also want to go on the offense. And if you look at what's happening both in Texas and Florida, we, again, we have very strong Democratic challengers against uh, weak incumbents. You know, Ted Cruz uh, won by a little over 2 percent in his last race. Uh, Rick Scott's never won by more than roughly 1 percent in those races. And we see these numbers uh, now in the margin of error and sometimes at the top end. Uh, that is momentum. Uh, we don't want to leave anything uh, uh, behind. We want to make sure that we're playing offense as well as uh, defense. And I always believe uh, the best defense is a good offense. And when you've got momentum, you've got to put resources in. But clearly, these are expensive states. We're going to need to continue to raise resources, which is why our website, defendthesenate.org, is critical. As we bring that money in, we're able to help folk, our, our candidates in both uh, Texas uh, and Florida, as well as uh, defend our seats. But uh, it's going to take uh, support from the DS SEC, as well as individual contributors, and I would encourage everyone to look at Florida and Texas. And if you believe uh, in our candidates there, uh, please invest. Um, the, the Harris Walls campaign is sitting on goo gobs of money, to use a, a technical term. But but I don't know legally how how much can the Harris Walls campaign help the DSCC? Can, can you get some of that money that, that they've raised to help you with some of those Senate races? Uh, they can. They, they help. In fact, we have had a transfer of about $10 million from their campaign. But we're also working very closely. If you think about our battleground states, uh, you, you mentioned Michigan and Pennsylvania and Wisconsin, uh, Arizona, Nevada. Those are also key states uh, for the president and for the vice president to win the presidency. So we are coordinating with them. That helps us a great deal. But we're on our own in other states, uh, like uh, Ohio is tough. Uh, Montana clearly is a state where we're on our own. And we're going to have to be pushing in, in Florida as well as in Texas. And that's why folks who contribute to DefendTheSenate.org help our efforts in all of those states. Uh, and with those resources, we see the momentum. Uh, we're close. And, you know, it's been described to me, don't talk about margin of error, talk about margin of effort. And that's where we're in right now. I think that's a great way to look at it. We're in the margin of effort. Whoever puts in the most effort in these remaining days will win control of the Senate and will win the presidency. And we have to we have to make sure Kamala Harris uh, wins and she has a Senate that backs her up every step of the way. Now, you mentioned you mentioned Montana being a tough seat. How tough is it? Is it is it is is Senator Tester? I mean, is he done? I mean, if you read some of the political press, they're basically writing his his political obituary now. 
No, and that is uh, absolutely not the case. Uh, uh, John Tester knows how to win in a very tough state. He's done it before. This is not new. We always knew that this race would be very close uh, in the margin of error, or what I like to call the margin of effort. effort. Uh, we turned folks out. We're going to be able uh, to do that. This is a, a smaller state population-wise. Retail politics matters. John Tester is as authentic as you possibly can get in a candidate in the state of Montana, running against one of those seriously flawed Republican candidates. Uh, he is going to run strong. He's going to run hard. And I believe he will win. Um, Senator Peters, let me get your reaction to something. Uh, um, Maryland Senate, can Republican Senate candidate Larry Hogan um, had to say today on one of the Sunday shows. Well, you know, I think I've been one of the leading kind of voices of opposition in my party for quite some time, and I'm continuing to do that. We're actually running uh, 20 or 30 points ahead of Donald Trump in our state. And, you know, I think I, I have a completely separate identity after, you know, being governor for two terms in the bluest state or one of the bluest states in America. Senator Peters, is that is that going to fly no, and it's absolutely false. He is a Republican. Let's be very clear. He is a Republican. Uh, and if he were to win the, the seat in Maryland, he will vote uh, with the Republicans, which could give them the majority. And if they have the majority, they can block uh, Kamala Harris as the incoming president on everything. It would be difficult for to even get members of her cabinet. You think about federal judges and how important they are to maintain the rule of law in this country. Larry Hogan's a Republican. He will vote for a Republican majority in the United States Senate. He has to be blocked. Maryland is a strong Democratic state. And if anyone in Maryland is voting for Kamala Harris, you have to vote for, for our candidate, uh, Ms. Osselbrook. So she is doing, uh, Angela is an amazing candidate. Uh, people need to support her. Uh, she will make a great United States Senator. Senator Gary Peters, chair of the Democratic Senatorial Campaign Committee, as always, thank you for coming to The Sunday Show.